Okay, thank you for our introduction, and thank you for everyone staying here, because right now I think it's for lunch. <laughs> okay, that will be fast. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Sean Chin Zhao from University of South Florida. Today, I'm very pleased to present our work, and the title is Carb Decoding Towards Creation Free Wi-Fi. And the co-authors are Zhe Qi, Zheng Ping Luo, Zhuo Lu, and Yao Liu. Now, Wi-Fi has become the most popular way for us to connect to the Internet, and it has covered anywhere of our daily life. But because of the broadcast nature of wireless channel, collision is still a problem. So devices have to access to the wireless channel one by one. And if they transmit together, collision will happen, which will extremely affect the network throughput. So in order to avoid the collision, uh, RTS-CTS-based channel syncing has been widely used in current Wi-Fi. And uh, basically, if there is a date, the transmitter, after random back-off, first sends the RTS to the receiver, and the receiver responds as CTS. And right now, the date is allowed to transmit. And finally, the receiver feeds back uh, ACK. And we know this period is actually protected by RTS, which is called NAV. And we can guarantee there is no collision in this field. But how about this field? Actually, if two devices choose the same random backoff, like this sample five, the following two RTS will collide. And uh, how can we figure out this problem? Let's look at the collision equation. The X1 and X2 are two RTS from different devices, and the Y is the client signal. Let's consider a simple scenario. There is no fading on the channel, so we have this equation. And uh, if X1 and X2 are random, we know only given Y, it is impossible to resolve the X1 and X2, which also explain why the collision is not resolvable. But what if X1 and X2 are not random? Suppose we give two constraints, like this example. X1 belongs to 1, 2, 3, and X2 belongs to 10, 20, 30. Now we know if Y equals to 20, 23, X1 must be 3 and X2 must be 30, uh, 20. So we solve it. But how to do this? And uh, we can use the two constraints, which the two sides, to build the matrix form. And uh, then the, re the resolving x1 and x2 become resolving this column vector g. And actually, g is a sparse vector. So we can use the compressive sensing to solve it, like this sample. There are only two entries are one, which, which means there are two uh, two transmitters to identify the 3 and the 20. And uh, now we know the two constraints or the two sides are very important for us to resolve this equation. And uh, the question is, do we have the similar constraint or the size if x1 and x2 are two RTS? And the answer is yes. Here is the RTS uh, frame architecture. And the, the total lines uh, is 160 bits. So if all the bits are randomly distributed, then we know the size of the constraint or the size of the site is 2 to the power of 160, which is too large. But if we inspect each field of the RTS frame, we know they are not random. For example, the first one, the frame control, uh, actually, this one is fixed by the standard. So the size now uh, decreased uh, decrease to, to, to the power of 40, 144. And again, for the receiver address, it is also fixed. So the size becomes 2 to the power of 1996. And the transmitter address, um, right now, for, for each uh, for each AP, it can only support a limited number of transmitters at the same time. So we assume there are, there are, it has 2 to the power of 6 transmitters. So the size right now becomes 2 to the power of 54. And for the last field, it's for the error correction. 
So it is not random. So the size keep on decreasing to the, to, to the power of 22. For the duration field, it is specified the NAV values in microseconds, which means the length of the following data package. So this one is supposed to be random. And the, the size remain to the power of 22. But this size is too big. So we are going to challenge if, if the NAV value is indeed random. So in order to verify, we collect our own data sites uh, with 1.3 terabytes from six, uh, from six realistic uh, environments. And um, here is a distribution at different locations. We can see they are not random. And uh, this is the NAV distribution for different Wi-Fi AP brand. And uh, like this one, the Birkin, we can see the values only focus on several points. So we know now this statement is not true. And suppose uh, for, each, uh, for each device, it has two to the power of six NAV values. So now the size becomes two to the power of 12, which is acceptable. So we name the constraint of x1 as omega1. And uh, now we know the size of omega1 is 2 to the power of 12. And similarly for the x2, so we can use the omega1 and the omega2 to build the matrix form, like this one. And, uh, and the size of, and because there are two devices, so the size of M is 2 times 2 to the power of 12. With this size, uh, solving G by the compressed sensing is feasible. So the collision can be resolved. Our methods leverage the distribution of the NMV, which looks like a carb. So we call our methods carb decoding, carb deck. And uh, the capital M is the carb matrix, and uh, each entry is a carb vector. So the collision resolution problem right now becomes resolving G given M and Y. So the M is very important in our system. But how to build it at the, at the re receiver? Basically, if a packet comes, it will first go through the traditional decoder. And if the error checking here is correct, we, we recode it and store it in a tooth table for the future use and respond a CTS. And when a new packet comes, again, if the error checking is, is wrong, we know collision happens. So the carb decoding will be triggered. It will first generate the carb matrix from the tooth table and, and retrieve the collide signal Y. Given this equation, we can resolve G. And uh, from this example, we know the collision must come from these two vectors. And then we pass these two vectors to the traditional decoder. And right now, if the uh, error correction is correct, we know the collision is resolved. And we choose one RTS to respond to the CTS. This is the basic idea of our paper. And the, here is the architecture of carb deck. We can see it is only triggered and it only evolved when the collision happens. And uh, we, in our system, we use the alphabet construction and the gamma decimation to further manage our uh, to uh, uh, carb matrix M. And we have some practical issues. The first one is how to respond to CTS if two or more RTS are resolved. And in our paper, we choose the device with, long, uh, with larger NAV to reply CTS. But this is just the one optional way, and it not confines to it. The second question is, is the complex. The second question is the complex complexity. And uh, in our paper, we use after the alpha beta construction and the gamma decimation, the size uh, finally become the, the size of M finally becomes two to the power of six, which is very tiny. And the complexity is equivalent to decode a normal package with less than three thousand bytes.
we implement our system in a campus environment and we use the success probability of collision resolution and the normalized throughput as, as the matrix. We first evaluate the single link, uh, single link performance of the two RTS clients. We can see as the time goes by, the success probability increases sharply because at the very beginning, we need to build the carb matrix. And we, our method can also be used to decode RTS and the data collision. And we, and we can see if the power of the, if the receiving power of the data package is weak, the, we can, oh sorry, we can, we can resolve around 50% 50 50 uh, collisions. And we also evaluated the single, uh, single network performance. And uh, we can see from this figure, the cup deck is uniformly better than the traditional decoder. And uh, in current Wi-Fi, RTS is used only when the following data package is longer than 2300, which is the RTS threshold. And because our method can decode the RTS collision, so we also evaluate the performance when we change the RTS threshold. From this figure, we can see as we decrease the RTS threshold, the throughput increases which means we can use the carb deck to build a network towards collision free. We also evaluated the two network performance and uh, here is the result. Anyway, again, carb deck is better than the traditional one. And uh, in summary, we propose a new method called carb deck to decode the RTS collision. And uh, with carb deck, we can even turn down the RTS threshold to zero to generate a network towards creation free. Thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to take some questions. Okay. Hello, Danny Chen from Princeton University. Great work, I really like the idea. So I, I wonder if, if you, your, work, your work required diversity in different brands of the devices. So for example, if every device is from Apple, they have the same like, characteristic comb shape, does it work still works? Yeah, yes, it, it is still works. And uh, actually, uh, different brand has, uh, the, the difference between different brands is very tiny. And uh, we can uniformly model the all RTS as a matrix and use this matrix to build the uh, to solve this equation. Thank you. Um, so, in your implementation, do you need um, to modify the receiver? Like, are you using your SRP receivers or? Uh, are yes, you I use the USRP to implement it. And uh, actually, the COP deck mm -hmm. is just as an add-on on the traditional 802.11. So in that case, why didn't you compare against ZigZag? Because ZigZag uh, from SICOM 2008, it would eliminate RTS CTS and it would still decode. Actually, this is a very good question. And uh, actually, ZigZag is used to is used to solve the hidden terminal problems. Mm -hmm. And actually, for my paper, I don't deal with the hidden terminal because hidden terminal can be solved by the RTS CTS. And for my paper, we are going to solve the problem inside of the CSMA which means that even we use the CSMA, RTS is still possible to collide. But the, but the hidden terminal can be solved by the CSMA. Okay, thank you. Okay. And uh, thank you. Uh, one quick question. So mm -hmm. how many different packets that can collide and you can still recover? And one way I see in future, can we just imagine a system where everyone just uh, send packet randomly without having any of these protocols, and can we just apply your technique to recover all the signal? Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for the question, and it's it's really a good question because uh, previously I'm trying to measure how many packets are collided in our in our packet trace, but actually I found that it is impossible to 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 marry it because if two packets are collided, I cannot uh, get get it in the packet trace. So in my so in my uh, packet uh, in my trace analysis, I don't have such uh, such uh, measurements on this. But I can see, for each RTS package, it has a one over eight probability to be client. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker.